what in, what in the world was that about? It's time to sing a song. It goes a little like this. Like this. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 2100 and... Mike's Daily Podcast. 84, 21, 84. How are we doing today? Are we gonna dance all weekend? And then we'll pray for a calm week next week after the last week, which was a pain in the butt. And a lot of things happened. And what? I did almost a whole week of podcasts. Wow. Because the show is called Mike's, Mike's Daily, Daily Podcast. Podcast. And don't forget that you'll be able to catch me on, uh, what do you call it? A Mike's weekend show. Daily I'll tell you more about that later. Podcast. But this show is called Mike's Daily Podcast. Yeah. Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, I was recently thanked for a recent photo. You know, I do a podcast picture all the time. And I was thanked for... Submitting a picture to Google Photos. Apparently, what? 4.8 thousand. No. Wait. Okay, I'm, I don't know how to read this. I think they're saying 1,000, almost 160,000 people saw this picture I posted of a park. It is the dumbest p- picture I've ever. Put, I said, heck, you can have it, Google, whatever. Deerview Park, it's in Columbia. No, not the country, but it's a place in Podcastro Valley. Where we are broadcasting from today is actually Podcastro Valley 10, the last place on earth. So Google said, thank you. Your new photo is a great addition to Google Maps. Thank you for taking the time to share your local knowledge. And I got zero money for it. You're welcome. It's a one thing. Is they rip us off, don't they? They use us. Be careful of people who use you. And realize when you're being used. You you have merit. And it should be completely acknowledged. And here's today's podcast picture. And not in some half-hearted, half-butt sort of way. But in a real way And the podcast picture today By the way I will acknowledge And give credit To my lovely lady friend Took this Of the lovely Lake Merritt In Oakland California Beautiful day Some people sitting out there On the weekend All social distancing Most of them wearing masks Unlike the people That were at that thing Last Wednesday January 6th A lot of people Without masks And a lot of people Not covering up their faces Not pixelating there for all the world to see Social media FBI is going to knock on your door You're busted Hey and Basil the Boxer And I went to Lake Merritt Years ago That's right my good boy Oh the late great Basil the Boxer So Once again As I say When I get into this sort of fray I What I believed Is not in any way Reflected by Any place I work at That you may hear my voice So please don't Adhere whatever I believe to what You listen to Where I'm listening Where I'm being listened to in other places is all I'm saying This is the opinions of One Mike Matthews But I was thinking And I like to say thinking And throw an extra G at the end And thinking about how Wednesday Dark Wednesday Sad Wednesday Very historic day Is actually the day of Epiphany In the Catholic faith And uh, that I believe is when The three wise men came to Visit Jesus And in fact you know Who pointed that out to me was Nancy Pelosi And she also mentioned The patron saint Of San Francisco, St. Francis Saying to you know Use patience and calm And Give uh, God your stress. Is that what he said, St. Francis? Something like, I gotta go back and. I, I went to Catholic high school for f- four years. And I remember one of the classes, we had to recite his famous uh, prayer. And I am such a bad Catholic for not. <laughs> what was it? 
Uh, four years, by the way, so four years in uh, Catholic high school, preceded by what was it, eight years, including kindergarten, in a Baptist high, uh, school, preschool, kindergarten, elementary school. Oh, yes, make me an instrument of peace. Thank you. Ah, oh, I completely forgot that. Yes, we used to say that over and over again. Um, make me a uh, instrument of peace uh, and help me to accept the things I can't accept and all that. Something that Nancy Pelosi reminded us in the evening of that horrible day on... Um, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. That comes up a lot, including in the one of the last tweets of the young lady who was shot and killed that was uh, had been with the Air Force for a number of years, who was then threw herself into QAnon and. Unfortunately And uh, Well she Was talking about How she was trying To get to Washington D.C. To help Bring light To the darkness Well In a way she did In a weird Way Hmm Where there is Sadness Joy O divine master Grant that I may not So much seek To be a Consoled To be consoled As to Console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. Yes, way before the Beatles said something similar to that. It, <laughs> the love you take is equal to the love you make or something to that effect. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And I remember we had to recite that at the beginning of every history class I had at Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, California. We used to say that all the time. My teacher, Mr. M M Motola, Mortola, was that his name? He had a cool bushy mustache a la Sam Elliott. All that to say, what a heck of a week. And... An interesting day, the day of Epiphany on that Wednesday, because it was the end of the line for a line of thinking. I know a lot of people, as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, to, including my mom, who is a big Trump supporter. A lot of people who supported him believed in the idea of draining the swamp. Going to Washington Mr. Smith goes to Washington And face The political masses The people That were Ingrained in the system The old Washington The the Washington That just is A disgusting Political mess That we all hate And I guess this is kind of The QAnon thinking as well But the whole Trump would go there And fix it And change it And tell those people those career politicians You're done But see how far extreme it got And it got out of hand Partially because Trump didn't know when to say when And he let his ego get in the way And as I mentioned Early on the day after the election When I started hearing all the conspiracy theories He cannot lose He's a sore loser And he took it to the extreme And made And used and used his followers to push that agenda To say, I'm not a winner I'm not a loser, rather I'm a winner And all these other people believe I'm a winner So let's push this because I, it, no And see where it led us it, it came to a head It came to a finale As, as it seems anyway It came to a, a very violent finale This past Wednesday this day of epiphany And it, it 
I, is it truly the end? My lovely lady friend is very skeptical of all of this. Of all the Republicans that are now saying that, uh, th- this whole farce of thinking that these were fraud, fraudulent votes, that this whole movement to try and change an election they disagree with now, they didn't earlier. Ted Cruz is even uh, finally pivoting. And I said at the day after the election, when I heard all these conspiracy theories start, that no, this is there's a time now that the Republican people that are Republicans, the Republican Party needs to pivot and stop endorsing the ideas of somebody who can't face the fact that he lost. If you do that, if you are still enabling him, that's what you are. You're enabling him. You're an enabler, and I hate doing that. I've been an enabler before, and it's a terrible, terrible spot to be in because you're being used. It all goes back to being used. When we should be the ones using our brains and thinking rationally about all of this. So, something that popped into my odd brain was the whole thing that Hillary Clinton said over four years ago about the basket of deplorables. And when you look at the pictures of the people that burst into the Capitol, that tore things up, that stole uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, lectern and and letter, and the guy got arrested because he was on social media. But those people were deplorable. I mean, I don't know about the term of a basket. It was way more than a basket, way more than a bushel of people, deplorable people doing what they did. And we should never forget this. And we should never forget the people that said that that was Antifa, that would not accept the responsibility of what those people did. We should never forget or forgive those people, maybe forgive them, But we should always remind them, let's just say that, hey, and there's one guy, I would love to say his name right now, but that's just a little bit, that'd be a little bit beneath me. But this particular guy, I heard him say it on his radio show, that it was Antifa the next day. And I think to myself, I, if I ever meet him, and it's a very strong possibility that I will someday meet him because we work in the same circles. I will tell him, look, sir. That was not smart that day to just throw that out there and continue the fervor, furor, the fur. That's getting a little reminding of somebody in another country that with the awful mustache. Um, But the you know continuing the the terrible line of 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 craziness of frenzy. And he was just exacerbating it by saying what he said the next day. And just those words. People got to be smart when they're on the airwaves. And not fan the flames. And Twitter just finally pulled Trump's account after all this time to show you how far he's gone. And the people... The people that are Republicans that are like, wait, this is too far. This has gone too far. He's done. I applaud them. And that's smart. And that's using your brains. And that's not allowing to be used. That's all I wanted to say on my little podcast today. Also that I have apparently, looking back at 2020... I visited 15 cities and 110 places. Oh, thank you, Google, for showing me that as well. And apparently, I drove altogether 4,568 miles. Or, in other words, 204 hours. That's probably pretty low compared to the average person who drives, but... Yes, thank you for telling me all of that, Google. And, you know, you, you've got way more information on me that you're not sharing. But thank you for at least a little bit of that. Okay, we're outside a cafe anyway. So, oh, by the way, uh, there are... I, I forwarded this to myself. I get these quotes 
from different people. And yes, President Trump did finally condemn the Capitol Hill riots, calling for a peaceful transition. And it, but it is interesting to see that. Um, and Lindsey Graham saying, "I don't believe the Twenty Fifth Amendment is appropriate at this point." <laughs> really? Uh, and Trey Gowdy explodes after Sandra Smith asks, "Who sent mob to the Capitol?" And Trey Gowdy said, "Did you hear the president's speech? The speech that happened beforehand." It, Got all the people to go there Alright, enough of that political stuff But I just find it fascinating It's a fascinating time, isn't it? We'll see what the next week brings Look who's outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley Ten. Hello Michael Matthews It's Madam Rutabago And I want some of that Coquito root beer Oh, Coquito root beer Yum Look who else is here Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, it's good not to be used by people there. Yeah, using them. Do you know that? Uh huh. Bison, do you sometimes feel used by Valentino? No, I never feel used by him. Do you know that? Go get me a burrito. I'll get you a burrito. Do you know that? It's probably just a friendship thing Not a using thing But um, Madam Rutabaga Do you ever get used by people? Yes Do you enjoy the Being on this podcast? Yes Do you want a burrito? No Well not everyone likes burritos But next show it'll be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Foreman And John Deere, the engineer And there's this little radio thingy That I'm doing tomorrow from 9am To 4pm You can read more about it at the website Mike'sDailyPodcast.com There's a link there to check it out And you can call in and tell me what you think about all of this Stuff we covered today 336MM daily 3 plus 3 equals 6MM As in Mike Matthews daily As in what this podcast has been now for several days Take it away, A frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.